Hello, and welcome to Portfolio Matters. Today, we will be discussing Sylvania Platinum, which has been uh, recommended to us by one of our viewers, William. So, but before we do that, Richard will read the disclaimer. Thank you, Keith. Everything discussed during the Portfolio Matters podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. Listeners should be aware that we will be discussing securities that we own or have a financial interest in. Please do your own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. A full disclaimer can be found at the end. Okay, Keith, let's hear about Sylvania Platinum. Thank you, Richard. Okay. So Sylvania Platinum was uh, recommended by William and that we take a look at it. And it has had an absolutely extraordinary run. It's up from below 10p four years ago, um, up tenfold. So what's going on? Is this sustainable? And frankly, is there any juice left? Is it worth looking at? And if you're a short shareholder, should you hang on? Um, now, Yesterday, we looked at the platinum market, and I hope you've all had a chance to look at that video, which basically showed that the platinum market was very small, that it was critically dependent on investment flows, and it was supply constrained and is likely to be in deficit in the coming years. So all that means that the, pr the platinum price is at least likely to stay where it is. It's unlikely to collapse because there's very little new supply coming onto the market. So who are Sylvania Platinum? Well, they're a South African platinum producer. And what is very interesting about them is that they're not miners. So they process the waste or the tailings or the ore from other miners. And so they don't have to do their own mining. And in particular, they process the tailings from chrome mines. So one of the side effects of that is that they're exposed to the chromium market, which obviously is used primarily in steel. So when during 2019, when the Chinese steel production collapsed and therefore chrome production collapsed, the price of chrome fell and some chrome miners cut production, which obviously meant the inputs into the Sylvania platinum also declined. Mm -hmm. So although they don't produce chrome, they are exposed to the chrome market. Um, they also have a number of development opportunities in South Africa, which we'll go into. But like everyone else, they are suffering from electricity supply problems. And at least some of these, they can't actually execute because they can't get the electricity supply from ESCOM. Right. Okay, so the share price is currently around 106. Um, it has a dividend yield, according to Stockopedia, of 11.7, which, uh, frankly, I don't know where they are getting those numbers from. It's, the company is very cash rich, but when you listen to the chief executive, there is no indication at all they're going to pay all of it out in dividends, which what is what Stockopedia appear to be assuming. Right. They have a very low dividend uh, P ratio, though, 3.8. So despite the share price having gone up tenfold, the shares actually on a very low multiple. You could say this is a value stock. Yeah. It's got net cash. Um, enterprise value of 250 million. However, having spent all this time analyzing the platinum market, it turns out most of its money is now made in rhodium. <laughs> so okay. in the, uh, when you look at actually what they produce by weight, it is mainly platinum. But the main value comes from rhodium. So the question really is, can the price of rhodium maintain its current elevated levels and or go higher? And 
or is all the good news in the price, both for Sylvania Platinum and for Rhodium? Okay, so this is where it is. It's all in northeastern South Africa, and they have six um, tailings operations in chrome mines, and they also have these other mineral projects. The mineral, mineral projects are in green, but frankly, none of them are operational or likely to be operational in the near future. Right. They are maintaining them and ensuring that their licenses remain valid, but they're not actually moving into development. Okay, so this is a schematic of exactly what they do. And I think the key point here is they don't have to do any mining, which is great. Other people do the mining for them. So the host mine produces the ore and it then may extract the chrome or in the case of one mine, it doesn't extract the chrome and the um, Sylvania actually take the run of mine feed. Sylvania then process it, take out the um, platinum group metals and then return all the chrome to the miner, the host mine, at a nominal cost. So that is what the miners get out of this relationship. They basically get additional chrome and no cost themselves or minimal cost themselves. Um, Sylvania then process it further up until the point where they have a concentrate and they then sell that to the smelter. So they don't produce pure platinum themselves. They sell to a smelter and that is important because essentially there's quite a long lag between them selling to the smelter and the smelter selling the platinum. And so you'll see this creates some accounting difficulties. Well, one of the advantages of not having to mine your own ore is that their cost of production is very low. So this is the price of um, all in costs of production for platinum from Sylvania compared to the rest of the industry. And you can see there towards the bottom of the curve. Mm. This is the production profile. And you can see that coming up the next couple of years, it's going to be declining production until some of their new investments um, come online, which increases both the recovery and the throughput rate in some of the, the mines. Okay, so you'll see here why the share price has exploded. Essentially, the profitability has gone up more than tenfold forecast 21 compared to 2012. Um, but because they're not mining, they actually have to do relatively little capex. Now they're adding bits of machinery and processing machinery, increasing the efficiency with which they can get some of the platinum group metals out of the tailings, but they don't have to, to um, invest in the mines and mine stability, etc. So they've got a lot of cash. The question is, what are they going to do with it? And there, there could either be share buybacks or dividends. But the um, listening to the CEO, he is very keen on maintaining a strong balance sheet. And he was talking about Aquarius Platinum which was a highly indebted platinum producer, which got into big trouble during the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. Right. And, you know, he is very keen on avoiding that. So I don't think there's any chance that they'll pay out anywhere close to all the cash. And they also have these development opportunities, but it is throwing off a lot of cash currently. Yeah. Okay, so one of the... Um, problems or not problems or one of the things you should be aware of is that there is this four month settlement gap between Sylvania 
giving the uh, selling the ore, um, not the ore, sorry, the concentrate to the smelter and the smelter actually selling the platinum. So Sylvania only get paid when the platinum is sold. So when they sell the concentrate to the smelter, they put in the accounts a, a sale with an estimated value, but the actual money they will get will depend on the final price when the platinum is sold. Right. And so the final agreement is on the average price of platinum in the month before the platinum is actually sold. So if there's a significant movement in the price of platinum, rhodium or palladium in the, th the four months between them passing the concentrate on to the smelter and the smelter actually selling the final product, mm -hmm. then there will be an adjustment right. to the accounts. And that is important when the price of rhodium and platinum has been shooting up as it is now. And it means that the accounts lag reality and there will be upwards adjustments in the accounts. OK, so <clears throat> rhodium. Rhodium is the most effective catalyst for nitrous oxide conversion. So breaking nitrous oxide down into nitrogen oxygen, which is important in uh, catalytic converters, particularly in diesel catalytic converters. And in September 2022, the EU will tighten further its emissions regime, which makes rhodium very important. And as you can see, the price has absolutely exploded. So in the course of two years, it's up, what, eightfold? Yeah. Now, rhodium is not readily substituted. However, obviously the diesel market is in decline, although it's not in decline in, for example, trucking. So, and the, the um, supply of rhodium is constrained. Most of it comes from South Africa and they suffer from exactly the same power supply problems and declining mine grades as do everyone else in South Africa. But the po important point is that Sylvania platinum is currently very dependent on the rhodium price. This is the platinum price, um, which we covered extensively in separate talks, so I won't go into very much. And that's the palladium price. So you can see of the three, platinum, which you know is called Sylvania platinum, but actually platinum has underperformed the other metals. And you can see here the effect of that. So bottom left is the prill split. Now, prill means the weight of ore, the weight of produ produced, the weight of the raw metal produced. And you can see platinum is 61.7%, rhodium only 12%, with palladium being the rest. Um, but when you look at the revenue split, rhodium makes up 46% of revenues. So rhodium has quickly come to be the main source of um, main source of sales for Sylvania. Okay, so accounts, and here you can see exactly why the share price has shot up. The um, revenue has massively increased, and operating profits have gone from you know 5.8 million in 2016. They're up tenfold to 54.3 million in 2020. Operating margin is enormous, 41%, and a, a, an amazing return on capital employed of 35%. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I've never seen actually a physical business with a return on capital employed so high, uh, which gives it a great ca operating cash flow, you know, to got more than enough resources to pay very good dividends and it is net cash. So all of that is very positive. So in summary, the positives. At present platinum group metal prices, 
Despite going up tenfold, these shares are cheap. Uh, the, and the margins are really astonishing. Mm -hmm. Cash flow multiple 3.1. Yeah. And it's uh, been investing in the processes. So it's becoming more efficient at recovering the platinum. Uh, it's also last year there were some disruptions due to you know the collapse of the chrome market but obviously now that um, that market has recovered those mines are resuming full operations it's debt free it's got net cash and it's promising to pay a special dividend although how big that dividend is i don't know and i certainly don't think it's going to be result in a yield of 12 percent it's also um negotiated the provisional sale of one of its operations for 5.6 million the negatives, it's had a hell of a run. Yeah. Um, it also has continuing power disruptions, partly mainly due to ESCOM, but also um, vandalism and metal theft. So when the metal prices are high, it operates in a poor district and people come and steal copper. Production forecast is to drop in 2022, as we covered. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing is that the South African rand, obviously mainly, the exports from South Africa are mainly mine products. So as mine products increase in value, so the rand has also increased, which increases costs for Sylvania Platinum. However, they have absolutely extraordinary margins at the moment, so that's really not the primary concern. I guess, other thing, I guess, it, sorry. I guess the other the other negative piece is if the price of rhodium drops significantly through substitution. Precisely, yeah. I mean, that's had a hell of a run. Yeah. And if, for example, electric vehicles were to take off, and um, you know, diesel personal vehicles were to decline very substantially, you would think that rhodium prices would um, would come back down. I mean, they certainly have had an absolutely extraordinary run. Right. And whenever you see price rises like that, there's generally a certain amount of speculation in that price. Yeah. And the moment it stops rising, the speculators take profits, which means that the price comes back down again. Yeah. So is rhodium toppy? The other thing is it's got a structure whereby there's a Bermuda holding company and in order to pay dividends, the dividends are paid from Bermuda. So then there's a six to eight percent withholding tax as the money is moved from South African Rand to US dollars in Bermuda and then paid out to shareholders. OK, yeah. so. In summary. Honestly, I think this is probably quite cheap, but I have real problems buying it when it's up tenfold in a short period of time. Now, as we discussed in the platinum um, presentation yesterday, if platinum were to get the attention of investors, it's a very small market and you could certainly see a bull market developing in platinum. But when the share price of, Plat of Sylvania platinum is up tenfold, I mean, every time I've bought companies like this, it has always been a huge mistake. Mm. Um, so despite the fact on the metrics it's cheap, the price of rhodium on which Sylvania is currently dependent for a lot of its profits just seems really toppy to me. So and I, yeah. I just had a quick look at um, the, the major uses of rhodium. So the, the major use, 80% of rhodium is used as a catalytic converter. Yeah. And then the remaining 20% is coated optical fibers, mirrors, crucibles, thermocouple elements, headlight reflectors, and an electrical contact material. Yeah. So it is, uh, it is very dependent on the catalytic converter market for its price, isn't it? Yes. Because all the, all the rest can be substituted. Yeah. Now, you're not going to use rhodium as the reflectors in car lights if its price has gone up tenfold, you know, it's you're going to... Use... Exactly, and it's the, uh, it's the catalytic converter is the issue, isn't it? So, to me, if I had had Sylvania Platinum, I'd probably be holding on. 
But as I don't, I'm not going to be getting involved. Although I think the shares on metrics look very good value. But it seems to me that the rhodium price is very toppy. I guess the other point, Pete, would be that if the, if the platinum price is in, if the platinum price doubles, um, yeah. if you go back to your revenue chart, so of course yeah. the prill chart. Yes. Yeah. So if, the, if the price of platinum doubles, uh, then that would yeah. increase, yeah. that would take their revenue to, to more than the current rhodium revenue. So, that, so they could they could live with a reduction in the price of rhodium if there was a, a, a fairly significant increase in the price of platinum. No, I completely agree. If a bull market in platinum develops, then obviously that would be incredibly yeah. good for Sylvania. So probably, but, that you're, if you were to buy this, you'd be buying it on the basis of your view of platinum. Yes, absolutely. You'd be buying it on the basis that you believe the current rhodium price is sustainable in the medium term and that there won't be any sub substitution of rhodium and also that there are opportunities in platinum and palladium and palladium again has had a great run and the price is very elevated yeah. and it is certainly possible that a run will develop in platinum so i'm going to keep this on the radar screen and if mm -hmm. there's a dip in the price yeah. I may well buy some, but right now it's on the radar screen it's rather than way. in the portfolio. Good. Okay, well, thanks once again to William for uh, bringing that to our attention, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for listening. Please can you press like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope to see you again soon. So Good. it's goodbye from Richard Wheater. Uh, it's goodbye from Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Full disclaimer, the material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages or for any results obtained from the use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.